Hey everyone, have you ever tried to learn how to code but got stuck? In my new Private Fan programming class, we're going to break that loop. This course is primarily focused on people who are complete beginners, so don't worry if you don't have any background. This course is different than other courses because we're going to teach you to think like a programmer and solve problems like a robot. So let's get started. Okay, so last time we talked about some of the limitations of, of the way that we're trying to solve this and what numbers we'd have to look between. So we talked about how a range, if the roots aren't inside the range that we select, that could be a problem. We also talked about the intervals that we're checking at. Now with this interval problem comes another problem, which is decimal numbers can be very long, actually infinitely long if it's an irrational number, right? So we need to, we need to figure out how, how we're going to solve this. If to get an approximate solution. And also in real life, we often do want approximate solutions, right? Our approximate solutions are actually preferable in some situations because first off, there might be too many numbers that we have to check. And second off, it might just be, it might be more practical or we might not care that much about the individual decimal places. So a lot of times we only care about something up to a certain amount of precision, right? So maybe two decimal places or three decimal places. That might be where we care more. Okay, so how do we add in these approximations? Now I'm gonna we're gonna we're gonna add a little bit to the code that we already have, um, and I'm going to do this with an equation that's very similar to the first equation we had, but instead of four in this B spot, we're gonna have five, and we're gonna see if we try to run through this now, it's not gonna find the solutions. It has nothing to do with the precision or the range. So if I started increasing this, it's just gonna make it take a long time, right? It's not going to actually solve anything here. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna change this to 101 divided by 10, and we're not gonna find it. But what we are gonna to try to find is an approximate value. Here's what we're gonna do, and here's how we're gonna approach this, right? So if we, I mentioned before that we could skip over certain values, right? And this is when we would need this approximate value, is if we ended up skipping over the true value that we're looking for, right? Now, how can we know that a root was between two values? And we, we actually did this a little bit earlier, right? So when we look at all of these numbers and all the roots, right? One thing you'll notice is that around a root, something very particular happens, right? So this is the root, this is the exact number where it's zero. But imagine we couldn't find this. We just had this number and this number, right? We can notice that the function goes between a positive and a negative number. So 0.3 and 0.29. Additionally, if you look here, we see it goes between a negative number, 0.29, and a positive number, 0.31, right? So actually, every time that we're gonna hit zero, we're gonna have to go from a negative to a positive number in a parabola. Right? So this is a fact that can actually help us, right? To find an approximate solution, we can just try to figure out when is it that there was a, a value that was once negative and now is positive, right? So that's one way we can do that, is basically check. If it goes from negative to positive, then the root had to be between those two values because there's no way it's gonna get go from here to here, for instance, without crossing this line or here to here without crossing this line. Right? So then we know that the root is there and we can use that as our approximation, just whatever the latest number is where that happened. So that's the way that we're going to try to approximate this value. Now, how do we actually go about doing that? So there's two steps, right? There's two things we're gonna wanna do. The first thing is we're gonna wanna try to figure out a way, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna write this down, sorry. We're gonna wanna try to figure out a way to determine if a number has changed, has if two numbers have different signs, right? That could be useful to know. The second thing is, uh, because that's how we would be able to figure out where this approximation is, right? And the, this, the second thing is, figure out a way to have a memory, right? So what we, we're gonna wanna know what the last number is that we just checked. Right now, we're just going through these numbers. We don't keep track of what fun is. And we're gonna to wanna to have a way of, of keeping track of that. So let's start with this first one. And we're, we're gonna talk about that in this video. In the next video, we're gonna talk about memory, right? So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is figure out a way to determine if two numbers have different signs. I'm gonna walk through a couple of things here to get there. So one thing, there's a built-in function into Python called ABS, and this stands for absolute. Now you might remember this from school, you might not, but absolute 
is referring to the absolute value. And the absolute value of a number is just the number, the magnitude of the number, regardless of if it's positive or negative. So an easy way to remember this is if it's a negative, you just take the negative away and make it positive. So for instance, the absolute value of any negative positive number is itself, right? So absolute value of two is two, but the absolute value of negative two is also going to be two. So this is one of the built-in functions in Python that we can use to try to solve this problem. So indirectly, absolute, the absolute value function is going to be giving us the what the sign was of the original number indirectly, and I'll explain how in a second. But taking a step back, this is also called a function. So this is similar to print and other functions in Python. There's quite a, a number of them that are built into Python, and they take in a particular argument and they return a particular output. So in this case, we're gonna have absolute value of two, and the input is two, and the output is two. Same here, the input is negative two, and the output is two. So these things are, are called functions whenever you see things with parentheses surrounding them, and there are ways of calculating particular particular values. Here, this is the absolute value function, and we're gonna be using that to determine the signs. One way we can determine if the signs, the sign of a number, is to just look at the absolute value of that number and see if it's equal to the number itself, right? Like I just mentioned. So if absolute value of two is equal to two, then we know that two is a positive number. Consequently, if absolute value of two is not equal to two, or is not equal to itself, then we know it's a negative number. So if absolute value of negative two is not equal to negative two, which is not, we know that it's negative, right? So this is the logic we're going to use to determine if it's positive or negative for us. So this is the this is how we're going to try to solve this first problem. Figure out a way to determine if two numbers have different signs. Okay, so I'm gonna set two variables. So I'm gonna say A equals three and B equals two. And I'm gonna use these as our candidate variables. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say the absolute value of a equal to a. And this is true because this is a positive number, right? Uh, and then absolute value of b is equal to b, which is also true because this is also a positive number. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try this out and I'm going to explain it in a second. So if I say absolute value of a is equal to, I'm putting this in parentheses, equal to a, and absolute or is equal to absolute value of b is equal to b and i'm going to explain this in a second i get true now what does this really mean so if the absolute value of a is equal to a then that means it's positive and if the absolute value of b is equal to b that means also positive right so what this is going to change into is true equal to sorry, true equal to true, which is true, right? Now, I'm going to try this out with a couple of different numbers and explain how it works. So if I make this negative, right, I'm going to have absolute value of A is equal to A, which is false because it's a negative number. I'm going to have absolute value of B is equal to B, which is true because it's a positive number. I'm going to run this same line of code, and this is false. Now, why does that happen? Because now we have false is equal to true, which is false because absolute value of A is equal to A is false. Absolute value of B is equal to B is true. Basically what this is saying is, this is only true for positive numbers. So it's this is a negative number, this is a positive number. So the signs are not the same, false. Are the signs the same? False. So this is what this is answering for us, right? So if I just try out a bunch of numbers, you can see that this is exactly what it does. And this is a completely valid way of checking your code, by the way, too, is just to see if it performs the way that you would expect. So really what this whole little thing here is doing is, uh, are the two numbers the same sign? Oop, sorry, see this is marked down, so the same sign. And that's what this part of this is going to do, right? So it's gonna come up true if they're the same sign or false if they're not the same sign. So the nice thing about this is we don't have to really, this is a little bit ugly, but we don't have to really remember this that much. We just have to put this into the code in some uh, reasonable way. So now we have, we have a way to determine if two numbers have the same sign. So what we should do is instead of using equal to, we use not equal to, and we'll have whether the two numbers have different signs. So this will tell us whether two numbers have different signs. So in this case, A is negative three, B is two. So these two numbers do have different signs and it comes up with true. If I change this back to three, 
and I run this, it comes up with false, meaning they don't have different signs. They have the same sign. Okay, so that was number one. Next video, we're going to talk about having a memory in our loop. And we're going to combine these two concepts together to be able to create our approximation, what we were talking about earlier with the negative to positive numbers. Mm -hmm.